Good evening, everybody. Good evening, and welcome to the NEET mock test number one zoology paper discussion. Yes, we have 35 questions in section A, and we had 15 questions out of which 10 question is compulsory in section B. So, total in this session, we will be discussing 50 questions of zoology that you all have written yesterday. Okay. First of all, a very humble request to everybody. Now also, this is the month of September is going to coming is coming to an end within two or three days. But now also, there are so much of students from our group who just frequently complains about the same that, sir, I haven't studied that, I haven't studied this, or my coaching have not taught that chapter, I haven't been taught this chapter. My school has completed only living world. My school has completed only animal kingdom. These are none of the excuses because for me, 2023, you have the entire chapters in your NCRT textbook. There, they doesn't distinguish like in this state uh, or in this particular coaching, they have taught only these chapters for the students. So I will be putting questions only from those. No, they'll be posting the question or they'll be preparing the question based upon the syllabus prescribed. That is a whole chapters. The whole 98 chapters in your NCRT is very important and they all have the equal amount of weightage as well. Clear? So please, from next time onwards, if you can truly attend a test only, then please do register or else please don't register your name. First of all, I'm telling you, okay? First thing. Second thing which I have to convey to you is that don't tell after registering and uh, without writing the test or after writing the test, don't give me the lame excuses that, sir, I haven't studied any chapters from zoology, any chapters from botany, any chapters from chemistry or whatever. I don't need such kinds of excuses. If you are going to attend a particular paper, you must at least study one or maximum two chapters. I have included, that's why I have included three chapters from zoology and four chapters from botany in order to make your work or task easier. Because in certain schools, they haven't, or certain students, who are not following us and who are only practicing the mock test for those students for their convenience have included seven chapters all together in biology so that you can study any at least any four chapters two from botany two from zoology and you can come and attend the paper you will get about 100 150 marks right so that much effort is not even put by you into your preparation so how we are going to get into a target of 550 or 650 or 700 plus. I don't know. You can just score that much of marks only if you put the effort from your side. Otherwise, whatever thing you buy hard, whatever thing you go through, it all will come to a conclusion or it will all come to a waste in that last three hours. That's why I'm telling you, if you uh, right now, your mind will be, you guys will be thinking that, why this person is always irritating us by asking us to write that, write this, register for that, join there, attend this, that and all. But right now you won't understand that. But after your NEET exam, you will definitely understand why I have told all these things or why we have told you or forced you to attend these papers. Or else just contact anybody from your family or uh, uh, your relatives or your school seniors or whoever who have attended NEET examination at least once. At least once or else you will get the correct amount or correct bit of information if you go and ask a repeater or a dropper student. They will tell you the consequence or the truth behind what I am talking to you right now. So please, I will be posting the schedule, the date, everything on the group. Please do study one chapter at least a day. Don't keep like half portions. We don't have time. Guys, even though your class 11th has not started in many states, in state boards, but CBSE, almost every school has started with their class 11th as well. NTA, National Testing Agency, won't wait for you guys to complete your portion. They will definitely, by me, 2023, everything will come to a uh, control and COVID will come to a control and they'll conduct the examination for sure. Okay, so let's get into the session. I, I know I have taken a bit amount of time from your precious and valuable time so just get into the session let's move on with the super amazing meat discussion i told you almost all the questions in the zoology part was ncrt based only yes so let's talk about this ncrt telegram group link is there in the description box 
don't forget to click the link and join our telegram group clear are you ready for the discussion everyone so let's get started before that once again reminding you don't forget to hit the like button do share it with your friends and subscribe the amazing platform for more updates on biology let's get into question number one i will provide the pdf of these sessions so listen very carefully in the class take down each and every take down your ncrt everybody i'll give you two to three seconds to take down your ncrt from your table open it open the chapter of animal kingdom right now right in your friend i am with the zoology paper discussion yes question number one notochord is a mesodermally derived road like structure formed on the ventral side during embryonic development in some animals point out if any misprinting is observed in this statement yes you know what is the answer for this question that is notochord is definitely a mesodermally derived structure you have learned in the ncrt NCRT page number 48, you will find NCRT page number 48. They are derived road like structure formed on the ventral side. That's actually wrong. Notochord is actually formed on the dorsal side. Okay, so that is actually the wrong statement. So the correct answer for question number 151 is option C. Yes, it is given in the NCRT. Notochord is a mesodermally derived road like structure formed on the dorsal side. So what was in the question? Question, it was in the ventral side. So the correct statement in the NCRT is dorsal side. Clear everybody? Moving on to the second question. Which one of the following statement is not correct? Which of the following statement is not correct or incorrect? Mesoglia is present between the ectoderm and endoderm in obelia. Yes, that's correct, right? Because obelia is a diploblastic organism, right? Obelia is a diploblastic organism. So instead of the layer called mesoderm, you will find the presence of the layer mesoglia. Radial symmetry is found in Asturias. At all time, yes, you cannot find it out that it is radial, but in larval and adult stage it differs. But anyway, you will find radial symmetry in starfish, right? So Asturias is a starfish. I hope you know that, right? Asturias means it's a starfish. Third one, Fisiola is a pseudocelomate animal. What do you mean by this? What is this, everybody? Liver fluke, right? Fisiola is a liver fluke. And under which phylum is the liver fluke coming? Liver fluke is coming under the phylum platyhelminthes. Liver fluke is coming under the phylum of platyhelminthes. Clear everyone? Yes. So it is not a pseudocelomate. It is a acelomate. Okay. It is an acelomate animal. It is an acelomate animal. Yes. Given in the NCRT, flatworms are triploblastic acelomate animal. Right? Page number 51 of the NCRT. Page number 51 of the NCRT. Triploblastic acelomate organism. Example is the Tania tapeworm and Fisiola, which is a liver fluke. Very important. Question number 153. Match the column 1 and column 2 and choose the correct combination. It's a given statement from the NCRT. I will show you the page number 54 of the NCRT. You will have all these labelings. Page number 54. Pilla apple snail, pinked up pearl oyster, sepia cuttlefish, loligo squid, octopus devilfish, aplasia sea hare, dentalium tusk shell, and ketopleura chitin. You had that. So let's match one by one. That is a tusk shell. What is a tusk shell, everybody? Dentalium. So tusk shell matches with the dentalium. Squid matches with the loligo. Squid matches with the loligo. Chitin with the cageopleura. And finally, you have the sea hair that matches with the dentalium. Sorry. Sea hair which matches with the aplysia. Okay, let me erase that. Yes. See here that matches with the aplasia. So which is the correct option over here, guys? It is option number B. So A matches with 2, B matches with 4, C matches with 1, and D with 3. Was it NCRT based? Give me thumbs up on the chat box, everybody. 
NCRT based. We should not tell it NCRT based. It's NCRT line by line. NCRT lines have been extracted for the question. Question number 154. Recognize the figure. This is there in your NCRT. I will show you page number 57. Page number 57 of your NCRT, you will find the examples of bony fishes. That is eastic tides. Hippocampus and catla. So which is a fish shown in the diagram? It is the catla, right? It is the catla. So which is this fish? It is the catla. And what is catla? It is a eastic tide. Okay, or it is a bony fish. You can easily identify that, right? It is coming under the class of bony fish. And in the same page number 57 in the writing part, you will find that Catla is a freshwater fish. Catla is an example for a freshwater fish. You will find Exocetus and Hippocampus are marine, whereas Rohu and Catla Claris are all freshwater. So which is the correct answer for question number 154? It is a freshwater bony fish or freshwater eastic types. Direct NCRT based. That is this hippocampus is a marine organism or marine bony fish, whereas catla or rohu is all freshwater fishes. Next, again, direct from the NCRT, those who have read and mastered with the chapter Animal Kingdom will get this correct. Which of the following is a poisonous snake? You know, Naja is poisonous, Crate is poisonous, Viper is poisonous. So the correct answer is all of the above. Even with your common sense, you can write or make this answer correct. Direct NCRT, NCRT page number 58. I'm asking you to, uh, or I'm telling the page number as well, in order to make you aware how the question and from which area the question have been coming. Poisonous snake, Naja, Bankeris or Crate and Viper. Clear? Question number 156. Claspers are present in. Claspers are present in. So you will find it in page number 57. On the top of the page, you will find under class chondrichthytes, you will find that in males, the pelvic fins bear claspers. Okay, the line, the NCRT line have been highlighted. So it is in male, it is in the pelvic fins which bear the claspers okay so let's get into the question that is claspers are present in claspers are present in the pelvic fins so you can just immediately cancel out this guys and moreover you know that claspers i have studied claspers the thing that must come to your mind claspers i've studied under the heading chondrichthytes so eastic tides coming options i can cancel out and claspers are coming in the pelvic fins. So I can cancel the option with the pectoral fins. So only one option remaining, which is the option A will be the correct answer for this question. So moving on to question number 157. Match column 1 and column 2 and choose the correct combination from the following options given. So 157, let's go with the correct answer. That is delphinus. What is delphinus? It's a dolphin. You know that it is a homeothermic. Crocodilus, you know that all reptiles are three-chambered heart, but crocodile have a four-chambered heart. So A3, A3, B4, B4. Then torpedo, you know that torpedo is a fish, is a chondrichthyte that have electric organ or that produces electric electricity or that produces electric effect. Okay, and trigon, you know that it is a poison sting fish. So C2 d1 c2 d1 so two options option d will be the correct answer you know guys why the question have been set in this way because you will be looking like this delphinus homeothermic so a3 only one option then you will go with then you will go with crocodile four chamber b4 so definitely you will go with option a but option a and option c are similar so the correct answer would be option number b it's there look Electric organ, torpedo, poison sting, trigon, then look over here, delphin is common dolphin, it is a homeotherm. Heart is usually three-chambered in reptiles, but it is four-chambered in crocodile. Have you got all the four points in the match, the following question from this particular slide? 
that is why you are advised to attend the discussion as well. So the correct answer for question number 157 was option number D. Moving on to question number 158. This is a bit tricky question. It's not directly from the NCRT line, but it is there in the NCRT in different, different areas. So I fail to include the particular NCRT context in this particular question. Okay, so I'll tell you about it. Which one of the following groups of three animals, each is correctly matched, each is correctly matched with their one characteristic morphological feature, which is that, let me look, jointed appendages. Jointed appendages is a characteristic feature of arthropods, right? Jointed appendages is a characteristic feature of arthropods. Centipede is an arthropod, prawn is an arthropod, but sea urchin is an echinodermatous option one is incorrect. Moving on to the second option, that is cockroach locus tania. Tania is coming under phylum platyhelminthes. Platyhelminthes doesn't show metameric segmentation. Metameric segmentation is shown by Annelida, Arthropoda, and Chordata, right? Third one, scorpion, spider, cockroach, ventral solid nerve cord. That's the correct one. Suppose if a person or since about the solid ventral nerve cord is not mentioned in the NCRT, you won't get that. So now we are moving on to the next part. From there, you will get the answer. Liver fluke, C anemone, C cucumber, bilateral symmetry. In C cucumber, you will see. In liver fluke, you will see. But in C anemone, you will see what? You will see radial symmetry. Right? Because it is coming under the phylum C lenterata. Right, everybody? So the correct answer is option number C. Clear? So you have to study point number one, that is the arthropods. You have to study arthropods is having the jointed appendages. That is why you are advised or you are asked to study each and every point from NCRT clearly. Arthropods, jointed appendages. Then one more point must be included. That is, yes. Radial symmetry is shown by the members. Radial symmetry is shown by the members of phylum Celenderata. Clear? Yes. Moving on to question number 159. Correct characteristic of class Reptilia is. Correct characteristic of class Reptilia is. Freshwater with bony endoskeleton, air bladder to regulate buoyancy. You know it is not about Reptilia. It is about the bony fishes. So that can be crossed out. Marine animals with cartilaginous endoskeleton, chondrichthytes, right? So you can cancel it out. Body covered with dry and cornified skin, scales over the body are epidermal. They do not have external ears. Yes, I have read it in the class reptilia. So the correct answer for this question is option number C, right? This is also not, this is coming for class amphibia, right? Yes, it's over here. The body is covered with dry and cornified skin, epidermal, scales or skew, they do not have external opening. All these points are only included, right? Dry, cornified skin, scales all over the body, epidermal, they do not have external ears, they are only included over epidermal scales, dry and cornified, body is most covered with external opening is present, they do not have external openings. So these are the points which have been included, right? So just look, guys, from this slide, for the last exam, you got this exam, which I've been recently over, you got this also, right? Poisonous snake. These are the areas, very interior portion also from NCRT only, they'll be posting the question or they'll be preparing the question. That's why you will get confused at all time. So I want my students to read the NCRT very much perfectly because all questions will be one or the other side from news and corners of the NCRT. Only moving on to the next question. Question number 160. This was an NCRT based question, but it has been not clearly mentioned in the NCRT, even though it might have cre created some amount of confusion in you. What is left? Or what is the remaining portion when a barge sponge dies? When a barge sponge dies, what is the remaining portion? That is actually, or that was actually the question. In your NCRT textbook, I will show you the line that is. The body of sponges, so here we are talking about phylum porifera or the sponges. Their body is made up of skeleton, spicules or spongin fibers. This term have confused you. Most of you have confused. Yes, 
But guys, just remember this when a bath sponge dries or when a bath sponge dries up, the thing which is left out will be spicule. If you want to see the diagram of the spicule, go to our YouTube session, check the playlist Animal Kingdom in the first or in the porifera lesson, you will find about this spicules and spongin fibers as well. Clear? Clear everybody. So the correct answer for question number 160 will be option number A. Moving on to the next question. Yes, this was also a bit higher level question, a bit out of NCRT question, mostly a bit not completely out of NCRT question, this one. But the idea have been given in the NCRT. In metagenesis of Nidaria, like Obelia, what is metagenesis? Metagenesis stands for the alternation of generation. Metagenesis stands for the alternation of generation. The polyp and medusae are respectively. Guys, please note this point down. That is in case of this Nidaria, the structure is called polyp and medusae. Both are deployed. That is 2N in nature. Okay, they both are 2N in nature. So the correct answer is option number C. Even though your NCRT doesn't demand, I just posted the question in order to confuse you itself. Okay. That is, you have to learn this particular thing. That is a polyp produces medusae asexually and medusae forms polyp sexually. Both are important. Clear? Clear everybody? Yes. Moving on to question number 162. This was not a direct question, but every word or every example is in the NCRT itself. Previous year neat MCQ question. Okay, this is a previous year neat MCQ question. Need 2016, need 2016 phase one, I suppose. Which one of the following belongs to phylum arthropods? Now it will create a confusion when you comes to the option. Dogfish, devilfish, jellyfish, silverfish. Now the thing will come to your mind. We have studied that fishes belongs to class pieces. So sir, is the question incorrect? No, these are the common names. I will show you guys. But the correct answer over here for 162 question number 162 is silverfish. Silverfish is an example of silverfish is coming under phylum arthropoda, where all these have another options. You know what is devilfish? What is devilfish, guys? Octopus, right? Octopus is a devilfish. And what is it, octopus? Octopus is coming under phylum which phylum is it coming? It is coming under phylum mollusca, right? And you know what is dogfish? Scolidon. Right? It is coming under the class of phylum chordata, under the class chondrichthytes. Jellyfish, you know what is jellyfish? Coming under coelenterata. Right? So the correct answer is option number D, jellyfish. Look. Sipia, cuttlefish, octopus, devilfish, you will get confused with this. Then you have some other fishes as well. Jellyfish. We have learned about dogfish. We have studied about silverfish, right? So you must learn about all these fishes. Here it's very important to know about the names, the common names. That is why when I taught you this chapter as well, I told you everything in this chapter is very, very important. Right? Yes. Next question. In multicellular animals, a group of similar cells along with intercellular substances perform a specific function. Such an organization is called, you know that it is a direct NCRT statement, a group of similar cells along with the intercellular substances perform a specific function, such an organization is called tissue. So which is the answer? Option number A, tissue will be the correct answer. Yes? Question number 164. The epithelium of dash of nephron in the kidney has microvilli. I will show you that. Yes, the epithelium of the proximal convoluted tubule or PCT in the nephron has microvilli. Direct NCRT line, right? So the correct answer is option number A, PCT. Have I changed at least a word in that line? No, I have included the simplest line of the NCRT itself, right? 
So the correct answer for the question number 164 is option number A. Moving on to question number 165, NCRT diagram, NCRT correct diagram. I have extracted it from the NCRT itself. Here, read the following statement and find out how many of these are related to the given figure. How many of these are related with the uh, given figure? I'll show you about that. In the NCRT, you will have this diagram. It is a diagram for the compound epithelium. Yes. Let's check one by one. Multi-layered epithelium. Let's consider that. Okay. Multi-layered epithelium. Let's consider. It's made up of more than one layer. Is it multi-layered? Yes, it's multi-layered. So that is a correct one. Limited role in secretion and absorption. And has a limited role in secretion and absorption. That's again correct. So that is again correct. Main function is to provide protection against chemical and mechanical stresses. Their main function, their main function is to provide protection against chemical and mechanical stresses. Correct? Yes. They cover the dry surface of the skin, moist, this most moist surface. Okay, so, sorry, moist surface of the buccal cavity and the pharynx. They cover the dry surface of the skin, moist surface of the buccal cavity and pharynx. Inner lining of the duct of salivary glands and of pancreatic duct. So that's again correct, right? So 165, the correct answer is option number A. That is all the four statements given above are correct. Are you clear with this? Clear everybody? Yes. Now got how the question. Now you will be amazed. Oh, this is this question was even there in the NCRT. Yes, everything is there in the NCRT itself. Okay, moving on. In all con this is an also an NCRT extracted line itself. In all connective tissue except dash, the cells secrete fibers of structural proteins called collagen or elastin. Yes, in all connective tissue, except dash, except, you know, except what blood. Oh my God. Yes. Is it clear everyone? Once again, let me just check into the book one second. Yes. So the NCRT have been mentioned. Yes, the areola tissue, which was one of the options, it contains a fibroblast that produces and secretes fibers. Look, in between you will find it out, but in blood you will never find. In blood, in bones, cartilage, areola tissue you will find elastin or collagen, but in blood you won't find that. Clear everybody? Moving on to question number 160. Oh my God. We have included 167th question. Yes, I think one question was missing in between. Yes. Okay, let's move on anyway to question number 168. Okay, which of the following tissue exerts the greatest control over the body's responsiveness to changing environment? To changing environment, which was the answer? It's given over here. Neural tissue exerts the greatest control over the body's responsiveness to changing condition. So which is the answer? Option D is the correct answer for this question. Moving on to the next question. That is in Periplanata Americana, the wings extend beyond the tip of the abdomen in. I'll show you the NCRT line. In Periplanata Americana, the wings that extend beyond the tip of the abdomen in male cockroaches. So in male cockroaches, option A will be the correct answer. Question number 170. The head shows greater mobility in all directions in a cockroach due to, I will show you that. Head shows greater mobility in all directions due to flexible neck. Okay, due to the flexible neck. The head is connected with thorax by a short extension of the prothorax known as the neck. So the extension of the prothorax is known as the neck. So the correct answer is option number B, flexible neck, which is an extension of the prothorax. Question number 171. A ring of six to eight 
blind tubules present at the junction of the foregut and the midgut are referred to as. You can find it as gastric CK, intestinal CK, which secrete digestive juice helps in grinding of food, right? So the correct answer is option number D. Let's check it out. A ring of six to eight blind tubules called hepatic or gastric CK or intestinal CK as well, present at the junction of the foregut and midgut which secrete the digestive juices. Yes, which helps in the... Sorry. It's not intestinal CK. One second. Yes. My mind went somewhere. That's why. Yes. A ring of six to eight blind tubules present at the junction of the foregut and the midgut. That you will call as gastric CK or hepatic CK. Which secretes digestive juices. Both these terms are same. Clear? So the correct answer is option number D anyway. Look. It is called hepatic CK or gastric CK. Which secrete digestive juices. NCRT only, right? Right, everybody. So I'll show you how many slides are left out. We have reached 44. We have 103 slides. Okay, we have 103 slides left out. Anyway, let's move with the next one. Recognize the figure and find out the correct labeling. Yes, recognize the figure and find out the correct labeling. This is the diagram in the NCRT, right? So A is the anterior aorta, B is the alary muscles, and C is the chamber of the heart. So which is the correct one? A is the anterior aorta. So A is the anterior aorta. A is the anterior aorta. B is the alary muscles. B is the alary muscle. C is the chamber of the heart. So the correct answer is option C. Moving on to question number 173. Everything included from the chapter structural organization. 173. Match. You have to match 1, 2, and 3 and choose the correct combination. I'll show you everything. First thing, squamous epithelium. Flattened cells with irregular boundaries present in the walls of the blood vessels and air sac of the lungs. Where is it? Flattened cells with irregular boundaries. Squamous epithelium. Found in the walls of the blood vessels. So you're matching as B3N. 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 Right? Next one. Cuboidal epithelium, cube-like cells, duct of glands, and tubular parts of nephrons in the kidney. Cube-like cells, cuboidal epithelium on the tubular parts of nephrons. So you'll get D1L. D1L, one option. So the correct answer for question number 173 is option A. So others are also over here, columnar epithelial cells, single tall slender cells, lining of the stomach and intestine, ciliated epithelium in the lining of bronchioles and fallopian tubes. Ciliated cells, ciliated and bronchioles and tall and slender cells, columnar found in the lining of the intestine and the stomach. Correct? Yes. NCRT only. Match the columns one and two and choose the correct one. I will show you about it. Tight junction helps to stop substances from leaking across. Tight junction helps the substances from stop the substances from leaking across a tissue. So C stands for one, two options. Cancel the other two at the instant itself. Gap junction, let's read about that. Gap junction facilitates the cell to communicate with each other by connecting their cytoplasm. Facilitates the cell to communicate with each other. B3. So B3 and A2. So the correct answer is option two. Clear? So option two will be the correct answer. Next question number 175. Tongue is a freely movable muscular organ which is attached to the floor of the cavity. I have told you this is a tongue. This is the floral cavity. It is attached to the floral cavity with the help of a structure known as frenulum. Known as what? Frenulum. It's not fenestra. It's not enamel. It's not papillae. It's frenulum. Similar. The correct in CRT line itself. Question number 175. Yes. The correct in CRT line itself have been extracted. Next one. This was an important question. Question number 176. 
the opening of the stomach in duodenum is regulated by stomach into duodenum last part of stomach they have a sphincter which is the pyloric sphincter muscle pyloric sphincter muscle so a is pyloric sphincter a is pyloric sphincter a is pyloric sphincter a is pyloric sphincter so the correct answer you got it opening of the common hepatopancreatic duct this is very familiar for everybody that is it is referred to as a sphincter of od it is referred to as a sphincter of od the structure which prevents a backflow of fecal matter is the ileocecal valve which is the ileocecal valve and finally you have the gastroesophageal sphincter opening of the stomach into the duodenum is guarded by the pyloric sphincter muscle point number 1 a muscular sphincter called gastroesophageal sphincter regulates the opening of esophagus into stomach number 2 Common hepatopancreatic duct is guarded by a sphincter muscle known as sphincter of OD. Point three, ileocecal valve, which prevent the backflow of fecal matter. Point number four, is everything is there in the NCERT, guys? Yes. Moving on to question number one seventy seven. This was again an NCERT diagram itself. The correct answer is A stands for serosa. A is serosa. I have told you they'll ask like this B and C, and together they'll call it as B. D, you know, it is muscularis. It's e muscularis, E muscularis. Here also D muscularis. A is serosa in both the options. Next, go with B. B, we know that. What is B? It is a longitudinal. So B is longitudinal. B is longitudinal. So here it is. One second. Oh my God! I marked it wrong. I think yes. B is internal, right? So it is circular, right? B is circular. C is longitudinal. So the correct answer is option number C. Next question. Yes. So the outermost layer is the serosa. The inner layer is the inner circular and outer longitudinal together called muscularis, submucosa, mucosa, and the internal structure. This internal part you will call them as the lumen. Clear? Okay, let's move on with the next question. Question number one seventy eight. Which of the following is or are are the major functions of the buccal cavity? major functions of the buccal cavity let's check it out anyway let's have to check it out for definitely right yes so let's check it out yes the buccal cavity performs two major function what are the two major function mastication of food facilitation of swallowing right mastication of food and facilitation of swallowing mastication facilitation of swallowing option B will be the correct answer for question number one seventy eight. Next one, question number one seventy nine. Which one of the following statement is correct with respect to digestion in humans? One pair each of parotid, submaxillary, sublingual gland make up the salivary gland. Yes, two parotid gland. Two submaxillary gland and two sublingual gland together make up the whole salivary gland. About fifty to sixty percent of starch is digested in the mouth. Wrong. Salivary amylase breaks down starch into maltose at an alkaline pH. Wrong. Thirty percent of maltose. No. About thirty percent of starch is hydrolyzed. Optimum pH is six point eight. Clear. Clear everybody? Yes. Next one. Yes, this is an out of NCERT question. Okay, this is an out of NCERT question. A child took sugar cane and sucked its juice. Regarding this, which of the following match is correct? Sugar cane, right? So what will be there? Sucrose, definitely. 
Sucrose is acted upon by the enzyme invertase in the duodenum to convert it into glucose and fructose. Right? So the correct answer is option B. You need critical thinking. Okay, you need over here critical thinking or critical concentration is needed. Okay, you must be so happy that all the questions have been coming from the NCRT itself. These have been in the NCRT, but not like in a paragraph. Line by line, they have not given the sentence or the table. One in this page, the other in this page, then like this. You have to correlate all those things. That's what a student must do, right? Simply marking up doesn't mean any sense. Moving on to question number 181. Parotid salivary gland are present in direct NCRT, right? Look. Parotid in the cheek. Right, so where is it found? Question number 181, the correct answer is option B, below the cheek. 182, in mammals, a significant initial role in the digestion of milk is played by. This question I can call as tricky. I haven't checked out the paper, so I don't know how much of you have made this correct. Amylase, you know amylase is a carbohydrate digesting enzyme. Pepsin, renin, renin. You will have a confusion between these, right, everybody? But the correct option is option number C, R-E-N-N-I-N. -N -N. Look, I'll write it once again in a very high way. Once again, let me anyway change the color of it. It will be R-E-N-N-I-N. -N -N. This is the renin forward for digestion. This renin you will study. This renin you will study in the chapter excretion. I will show that for you. Renin is a proteolytic. Renin is a proteolytic enzyme. Okay, renin is a proteolytic enzyme found in the gastric juice, which helps in the digestion of proteins in the infants. Right, everyone? Yes. So this what tells you this is what which is demanding like you have to pay attention towards spellings as well yeah next one this was a direct question question number 183 select the answer which gives a correct matching of the end product of the digestion in humans with a site and mechanism of absorption yes which is the answer guys Correct answer is option D, glucose. Small intestine, active transport. Glucose, electrolytes like sodium against the concentration gradient, which is referred to as the active transport. Right? Glucose, small intestine, and by the process of active transport. Question number 184. This was a direct question which we have already discussed about the sphincter muscle. That is um, sphincter of interest. We haven't known about that, right? Have you studied about that? No. So we have studied about something. We have studied about the rest of the food. We haven't, is not aware about this A part, but we are aware about B, C, D, and E. So let's match one by one. Cardiac sphincter. Cardiac sphincter between esophagus and the anterior stomach. So B matches with S. Got the answer, everyone. Last and final question of section A. Yes, I have included the same slide which we have discussed. Right, moving on to the next one. Special feature of bile juice is that, I will show you about it. The bile juice has no enzymes. The bile juice has no enzymes. So what is the answer? It is the special feature of bile, right everyone? It has no enzymes. Let's move on to the next part. That is the section B. Can we move everyone? Just give me hearts on the screen. Section B, we have 15 questions. 
We have 15 more questions to discuss at all. Okay, let's move on. Defecation. Okay, defecation is carried out by the mass peristaltic movement and is a. Uh, we have it over here. Defecation. Look, defecation is a voluntary process carried out by mass peristaltic movement. So it is a voluntary process, right? So defecation is a voluntary process. Correct answer is option A. Next one. Lactose is hydrolyzed into lactose is hydrolyzed into. Let's check it out. Lactose is hydrolyzed by the enzyme lactase into glucose and galactose, which is the answer. Glucose and galactose. Option C is the correct answer. Question number 188. Cartilage is present. Cartilage is present between. I'll show you about it. Cartilage is present between the tip of the nose. Outer ear joint between adjacent bones of the vertebral column, limbs and hands in adult. So which is the correct answer? Middle ear joints? No, it won't be found. Between adjacent bones of the vertebral column, between the adjacent bones of limbs of the hand. So B and C is the answer. Question number 189. Select the incorrect statement. Select the incorrect statement about phylum as shall mean this. Select the incorrect statement about Ash Helminthus. Elementary canal is complete with a well-developed muscular pharynx. That's correct. Sexes are separate. Correct. Often females are longer than males. Is that correct? Yes, that's again correct. Yes, that's also correct. Don't get confused. That's also correct. Fertilization is not external, it's internal. Okay, it's internal. Let's check out one by one. Look. Elementary canal is complete with a well-developed muscular pharynx. Sexes are separate. Males and females are distinct. Often males are longer. Fertilization is internal. This is the NCRT cutting only, guys. NCRT line. Right? <coughs> Sorry. Let's move on. Question number 190. In round worm, one second, yes. In round worm, often males are. What about in round worms? What happened? What is the condition over there? Males are always smaller than females. And this is also we have studied over two third of named species of arthropods. Mollusks contain a particular organ for what feeding, right? So which is the answer option number C. Females are longer than the males. That means males are shorter. Over two third of the named species are arthropods. They contain a particular organ for feeding. They contain a particular organ for feeding called radula. Question number 191. In female cockroach, how many ovarian tubules or ovarioles are present? How many ovarian tubules or ovarioles are present? 14 to 16. Right? One second. Let me have a look over there. One second, guys. How many ovarian tubules or ovarioles are there? It's eight. Okay. Eight ovarian tubules or ovarioles are there. In the answer key, it's given B. It's option A. Clear? 192. So this is about the eggs. Okay. The page behind this. The page behind this has that statement. In cockroach, the gizzard contains... Six highly chitinous exoskeleton plates. What are it? Six. So 192, the correct answer is option B. Weight of adult human liver. Weight of adult human liver is 1,200 to 1,500 gram. 1.2 to 1 1.5 kilogram, which is 1,200 to 1,500 gram. Clear? Yes. Question number 194. How many of the following enzymes are present in the intestinal juice? 
how many are present in the intestinal juice. Let's check out one by one, guys. Let's check out it. Clear? So you just find out and comment me what all are those that are coming under the intestinal juice. Just tell me. Yes, everyone. Let's mark one by one. Lipases is present. Nucleases, is it nucleases present? No, you cannot find nucleases over there, right? Cannot find that. Sucrose also never. Maltase is there. Dipeptidase is there. Invertase is there. Lactase is there. Nucleosides. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the correct answer is option B6. Read this. Okay. Read NCRT, guys. You will get that. Vomit center is located on. Vomit center present in the medulla. In the medulla option B. Moving on to the last five questions. John, this last five questions of zoology was very simple. I know that. Okay, finally, I haven't got time to prepare the last part. So I just included some easy questions. Jaundice is a disorder of the liver. So 196 answer is B. Okay, in jaundice, the liver is affected. Portuguese man of war. You know what is Portuguese man of war? It is the Faisalia which is a sea lantern. It's not the soldier. It's not a Portuguese soldier. It's not a sponge. It's a polymorphonuclear. Sorry, it's a polymorphic colonial sea lantern. So option D will be the correct answer. Faisalia, Portuguese man of war. Okay, next question. Okay, this question was a bit confusing, but it was in the NCRT. You might not pay attention. Alfonso Corti was. I will show you that before the chapter, uh, beginning of the chapter, digestion and absorption, you will find the picture of this person. You will find this. Alfonso Corti was an Italian anatomist. Was there written the option? Option D. Question number 119. Brunner's gland are found in. Where are the Brunner's gland found? Where are the Brunner's gland found? Brunner's gland are found in the submucosa of duodenum. Found in the submucosa of the duodenum. Yes, in duodenum, glands are also present in the submucosal layer. That is a Brunner's gland. Last and final question of zoology. That is a 200 question, guys. Vermiform appendix is a part of, you know, it is elementary canal. Right? So thank you, guys. See you with the next test. And this is me signing out. See you with the next class in the next day. Okay? At 9 p.m., you will have the botany discussion as well from my side. Clear? Bye-bye, guys.